think I'm going to need a bigger bench. I think that's what it's coming down to. If these manufacturers are just going to keep building bigger trucks and bigger cars, I'm just going to have to get a bigger workshop. I, it's really the only answer. Have you seen the size of this thing? This is the new Hobau Racing Hyper four-wheel drive monster truck plus two. I think I'm just going to call it plus two to make this easier on myself. This is a massive electric four by four monster truck and I'm really excited to try it out. This thing looks pretty awesome. I, I've, I've driven Hobau trucks before, driven Hobau racing buggies before, and this thing just looks incredible. It's just so huge. So where are we gonna start with this thing? Let's just start off talking about the exterior features on here. And there is a lot to talk about. Let's start off with the body, of course. And this is just a cool extended cab monster truck body, maybe four-door monster truck body. Simple graphics on the side, and uh, it's just got a cool look overall. It's got this roll bar in the back that's molded plastic. It even has some mirrors on there. So we've got some scale type style going on. It comes pre-decal from the factory, aggressive front end on here. I really like the body on this. You could also get it in silver, and it's available in clear. I did see that option on the side of the box. That might be for the 80% uh, assembled model. I think they're gonna offer that. This one right here is the ready to run version and uh, it makes my life a lot easier. There's some pretty good electronics in here. I'll show you that in a bit, but let's go on to the front bumper of this thing. And it's actually really cool. It's got amber lenses on the front, uh, you know, for like a fog light and uh, just a wide front bumper with a skid down to the chassis. And then out back, it's got another wide rear bumper on it. Uh, but what you do is, uh, you know, after you get this thing out of the box, there is a little bit of assembly. You have to go and put a wheelie bar on the back and it's a triple wheel wheelie bar, which is pretty neat. It's uh, pretty easy to assemble. It's just a shaft that goes through the, the three wheels and then through the, the bracket and, and use a couple three millimeter nuts to secure it and then of course bolt it to the rear bumper. But it looks very cool. Adds to the styling of this monster truck, just kind of like a big stunt off-road crazy truck. And now onto the tires. The tires are pretty huge on here. Kind of this long lug type, I guess. Uh, kind of diamond, not not diamond, but it's it's a unique tread. Uh, I, I haven't really, I don't think I've seen one like this before. Uh, but very cool looking tread. Nice soft compound, actually. Uh, so I would say medium to firm foam uh, on the inside. So hopefully the wheels don't grow too much on this thing when uh, when it's throttled up. But they do come mounted to these uh, uh, gunmetal type of rims. Really cool looking spoke rim on there. And there is a 17 millimeter hex nut to hold the wheel on. However, on the other side, it is a 20 millimeter hex. So if you're looking for optional wheels out there, it's 20 and I don't, I don't remember off the top of my head any other 20 millimeter options out there. Uh, but, but these wheels and tires look pretty cool and should do the job. All right, let me take the body off. We can start checking out the interior features on this. You know, all the suspension geometry, the chassis. The chassis is very cool. Twin vertical plate style, I, I guess, but it's all one piece. It's pretty neat how it's stamped. You know, pull that off. Very cool looking body. Again, pre-painted from the factory. I'll throw that right over there. All right, now check this out. Let me show you guys that. Get a nice up close look at it. And uh, why don't we start off by talking up front here with the front suspension. Actually, it's pretty much the same front and rear. A lot of trucks are like this where the, the same suspension components and, and even uh, drivetrain components are in the front and the rear, which you know is cool because it cuts down on parts. But with this design, you do get a little bit of rear toe in uh, as you cycle the suspension, which you know uh, with a monster truck, it doesn't really make much of a difference. But let me get back to the front here and I got to start off with the shocks. These shocks just look very cool. A huge bore on these things. They're an aluminum shock, threaded body, aluminum top cap, and uh, even aluminum lower cap. And pretty decent sized shock shaft in there. Uh, four millimeter shock shaft. Uh, the, the body itself, it's like about uh, almost 20 millimeters on the outside. So I'm guessing around you know, 18 millimeters on the inside. So that's a big shock. It's going to require some oil if you do go and rebuild these things. Got a pretty firm spring on there and it does feel pretty good as far as the suspension goes. Uh, one thing I really do like on here is it does have a retainer on the lower perch to help keep that spring in place and that doesn't pop out hopefully uh, or, the, or you lose a perch or something like that. So neat shock setup on here, but basically the same front and rear and uh, you know the shocks mount to uh, this large composite shock tower. What's pretty cool about this is there is an aluminum uh, tie bar up top there to kind of just help tie things together. 
and uh, you know eliminate any flex at the top all right down at the bottom of the suspension pretty beefy h arms on this thing they've got a lot of webbing to them and they've got a pretty solid feel to them but what i really like about this uh you know it's it's a monster truck they do go and give you adjustable tie rods all the way around on this thing and they're they're pretty large tie rods as well they've got a through hole on them so you can go stick a wrench in there and, and use that to adjust it uh, but they are captured on both sides that's really good to see on a a monster truck that's going to do a lot of bashing and stuff like that so the tie rods won't pop off um, you know on the end links there so what i'm seeing in the suspension here uh, looks pretty good so far uh, out on the outside of the suspension arms we go to really heavy duty looking caster blocks and steering knuckles again the, the steering knuckle is universal so it could be used front and rear on this and it actually has a, a arm that bolts into the steering knuckle uh, that can be removed uh, if you if you need to in order to reposition the, the knuckle somewhere else. You know, maybe if you have a spare that needs to go in or something like that. So I just I just wanted to point out the compatibility there with that. On the inside of the suspension, uh, the arms are captured, uh, the pins are captured in aluminum plates, which is a must on a truck of this size. And then of course mounts to the center gear case. It's uh, you know kind of like your eight scale racing buggy and truggy style setup. Uh, just much larger, much beefier to handle the monster truck stance of this vehicle. All right, now inside the gearbox, we've got differentials. Of course, all metal gears inside have to have all metal gears. And then, of course, there is a, a you know steel outdrives on here, and they look pretty heavy duty. You know, a scale size, maybe a, a bit larger. It doesn't look exactly like they carried it over from one of their a scale vehicles. It's pretty close, but uh, the the axle shafts on here. RCV style axle shafts, front and rear. That is always a plus uh, when they come on any type of ready to run vehicle and they look really heavy duty as well. Full ball bearings throughout this entire kit. It's a must and the drivetrain does spin pretty smooth. Uh, you know, I was messing around with this before and everything seems to be built properly, just going over it. I couldn't find a single thing that I wanted to go on and maybe work on, rebuild or anything like that. They do a great job when they build their kits. All right, now on to this chassis. This is an aluminum plate chassis here, 2.5 millimeter thick chassis and it's stamped so it looks like a twin vertical plate however it's more like a u-channel so it's all one piece and it's really ultra rigid i mean there is just no flex in the center section of this truck and it's got a bunch of relief holes in here to one make it look cool and two to lighten it up and of course it's anodized in this very cool blue color a lot of blue anodizing going throughout this entire kit here definitely like the look of it i, I think they did a great job overall in the styling of this truck uh, up front in the, the chassis here is a dual bell crank steering, much similar to an A-scale uh, buggy and truggy design. It does have a servo saver set up in there, and it does have a wire style link bar between the two, which I'm just, I'm fine with. I probably would have rather seen an aluminum plate there, uh, but maybe there's some spacing issues. Kind of looks like there's some spacing issues in there, so that's probably why they went with a, a, a rod type of setup. Uh, we've got some bracing in the chassis. We've got this actually aluminum post that grows across the back here that ties into the, the chassis brace and a pretty neat looking setup. Uh, in the center section here is a number of, of cross braces. They are aluminum cross brace. Uh, the center one here uh, supports the transmission. And then we have some back here that supports a plate that supports the, uh, the motor mount assembly. And the motor mount assembly is aluminum as well. There is a clamp back here and a front motor plate and they've used like pretty much every screw. Um, there's like four screws holding that motor in in there. So <laughs> that is pretty interesting. It is adjustable and it looks like it's really solidly mounted there. Uh, let me move on to the electronics because it's got a pretty good electronics package in this truck. Uh, the motor itself, we were just talking about the motor. The motor is a 2000 kV motor. Should provide plenty of power. Over here, it's a Hobbywing WP8BL150 ready to run speed controller. And it says it's rated 426S on the side of the on the label here. And then as you would expect, it's it's cooled by this cooling fan, it's waterproof, even a switch boot on there to keep water out of the switch assembly. And what's really nice about this is they run the wires down through some wire loom just so nothing gets caught up in the gears or anything like that because the radio box is up front. So that's a nice little attention to detail there. And of course, this is what I like to see, XT90s. I'm starting to use more XT connectors and uh, definitely like that they have these high current connectors on here with some really heavy duty wire. 
Inside the radio box is just this tiny little waterproof uh, receiver. Uh, as I understand it uh, on, the, on their box art, it's a waterproof receiver, uh, but it definitely has some protection in the radio box there. And, it, and of course, mates up to ready to run radio that I'll show you in just a bit. But let me kind of go back over to the transmission on here. So inside we've got all metal gears, uh, even out to the spur gear. And I don't see a slipper clutch on this. I mean, it looks like we just got direct drive. We've got some really heavy duty drive shafts in the center to go to front and rear differentials. And uh, just a really great looking setup overall. I mean, you know, nice and clean, nice and simple. It looks like it's heavy duty. And uh, again, we'll find out in testing if everything's gonna hold up. As you can see right here, we've got the battery mounts on the outside. And these battery mounts are actually pretty neat. We've got three Velcro straps to hold in the battery, um, but they've got these two little pinch clips. And if you push them in, you could actually slide the battery tray out. And I guess that's, uh, you know, if you want to have multiple trays and just slide the batteries in, makes life a little bit easier. Okay, now up top here is a roll bar. What I thought was pretty cool about this roll bar is it's got this like silicone rubber kind of pad to the top of it here, which sits right underneath the body. So kind of like a bash protection type of roll bar setup. That looks pretty trick. And if I go and pancake this thing, Hopefully that helps protect the insides of the truck and especially the, the speed controller over here. The speed controller is actually interestingly mounted. I, I didn't mention that before. Uh, it does have a zip tie to hold it down, but it's on this uh, kind of a flexible uh, plastic plate here. So it kind of bounces around a little bit. Maybe that helps absorb any shock. Uh, but let me just flip this over so you guys can see the bottom. We, we've got some high ground clearance to that chassis here. And as you can see, the, the skids are, are actually chassis bottom is all integrated up into the twin vertical plates. And uh, just a really trick looking setup overall. Definitely like that. And, and this truck is really just a beast. Now, let me show you some of the other stuff that comes with it. They do go ahead and give you the programming card. So you could go and adjust uh, the speed controller if you want to. There's a bunch of different modes in here. Running mode, brake force, low voltage, start mode, and, and a bunch of other things. So great to go and mess around with the speed controller if you want to here's the hobout radio system the hb 2.4 gigahertz radio uh that's what that's what the label says actually but pretty cool radio because it's got a mixture of digital and analog trims here uh pretty comfortable it's plasticky it's got a foam wheel on here four double a's go in the bottom you're going to need to supply that uh but that will definitely get you up and running then of course it comes with the usual stuff it does come with the manuals it does come with uh some some generic tools uh, for maintenance if you need it what you really need is the 17 millimeter wheel nut wrench that it comes with and finally it does come with uh some some battery foam so if you, you go and uh, put a battery in that's a bit shorter. You could go space uh, the battery tray out with some foam so the battery doesn't move around. They give you some two-sided tape to help secure that. All right, so that is all the features of the Plus 2. This thing has some great features in there. Again, I love the shocks on this thing. The drivetrain looks bulky. I like the electronics in here, definitely. And, and the look is cool as well. But is it going to perform? I'm going to bring it out to one of my usual test locations, and we're just going to go wild. <laughs>
Okay, it's time to break down the performance of the Plus 2 and to test this truck out, I took it over to a local BMX track and a bashing field that I take a lot of our vehicles to. And this truck is a crazy beast in the off-road element. I mean, it was just throwing dirt everywhere. The jumps are insane. You know, the turning on this thing is wild as well. Uh, but the big thing is all that power going up to the front. I'm sure you guys saw that in the video there, like with the front wheels growing. It's just an animal out there. Now let's, let's break it down a little bit closer. Let's talk about the steering first. And this does have a high voltage servo in there, a 7.4 volt servo. It's got a nice metal arm on there and off power, uh, that servo does a very good job. It gets this truck turned around within the lane of a BMX track. And, and for a large size truck, I'm cool with that. I think it does a good job there. Uh, but under power, uh, these wheels uh, start to grow because the center diff is pushing all the power to the front. And uh, you know, when those wheels grow, the, the steering diminishes a little bit. Uh, actually, uh, kind of a lot, depending on how much you're throttling the truck. So just be aware of that. Uh, when I was doing some high speed runs back and forth in the park lot, I would start to crank the wheel and the truck just wasn't going where I wanted it to. And, and maybe the servo saved in there was kind of collapsing a bit maybe the servo just didn't have the power at that point so you know when you're really ripping on it uh, just be aware of when you need to steer it because you're need, gonna need to back off the throttle hit the brakes or whatever and, and to get this truck turned around but steering uh, you know I do like that they uh, they gave you a decent servo in this package uh, onto the handling of it uh, out there in the big dirt field it was a beast at mid throttle low throttle of course it was just soaking up all those bumps and ruts and rocks and stuff like that once you start to really pull on the throttle again the tires start to grow on there and that's when this thing starts to dance around a bit and you really have to be good behind the wheel to keep it under control it's kind of wanting to veer side to side so uh, just be aware of that in the, the handling department uh, but jumping this thing very awesome i mean i just hit those jumps at the bmx track and this thing just sails nice and smooth through the air and the landings are really plush correcting it with steering and braking is is uh, just really easy to do and uh, overall i just loved how this thing jumped it was a blast it had my heart pumping it was pretty awesome and what was even cooler was backflipping yes because the wheels grow so much you're pretty much backflip it all the time and it's just wild to see this thing you know with its size doing backflips now let's talk about speed you guys saw me ripping it back and forth in uh, the parking lot for the size of this truck i think 6s is is on point uh i think it was just a, a beast out there again the tires uh, i keep saying the tires grew and, and and that's something we really need to talk about uh, because a lot of the power just unloads to the front and you just see this thing rip it by you. It is definitely a lot of fun. Braking, uh, you know, no clicks from the transmission. So that's always a bonus, uh, you know, because uh, with, with a power system like this and uh, the weight of the truck, sometimes if you throw something into reverse, it will, you know, rip out the gears. Didn't seem to have an issue there, uh, but power on this thing, it's just an animal. You guys saw it. Now let's go on to some of the durability stuff. And uh, what I need to kind of just throw it at you guys was I got one of the pre-production trucks uh, and it actually had pre-production tires. They weren't final and they the first set of tires pulled off the rims and, and Hobau was already aware of the situation. Uh, and when I told them they had shipped me out a new set of tires that actually have a revision to them. So that's what you see on here are the new tires. Didn't have a problem with it after that. And this truck, I, I don't even know how many runs I have it on at this point. It's been run a lot of time. Uh, the other thing I want to tell you guys about uh, is, is the heat. Now I hit about 200 degrees uh, at the motor. I think it was a 125 at the speed controller, but you could kind of just smell a little bit of that electronic smell. I think I know, I think some of you guys know what I'm talking about, um, but uh, you know, everything is still working fine. And uh, just be aware of your temperatures when you're driving this. Uh, I, I started off with a, an 8,000 milliamp battery pack. Uh, and, and when I did go and temp this, I was running 5,000 milliamp packs at the end of, a, at the end of one of those runs. Um, so just be aware of your temperatures. That's, that's where I'm getting at. Uh, the other thing is the battery trays. Now, when the battery trays arrived, they were uh, installed from the bottom of the truck. So that's the way I thought they were supposed to be installed. And when I came off one of the jumps, uh, the battery ejected out of the bottom of the truck. So I quickly learned that you need to install the battery trays from the top of the truck, and that way they can't drop out of the bottom of the vehicle. So be aware of that if you get one of these trucks. And finally, what I want to talk to you about is, again, those tires that grow, all the power going up to the front. The differentials in here are grease filled. They don't have oil in them. Uh, so because of that, a lot of the power just goes to the front of the truck. 
and you'll see the wheels grow. Now, in my experience in the past with other vehicles, when you get a lot of power going to the front, it tends to heat up the differentials, whether it's the center or maybe the front, if the front wheels are growing from side to side. And when that happens, that heats up the differentials. So uh, there is the potential of a failure there. It is a plastic gear cup in there uh, and the cross pins from the uh, spider gears may want to work their way through. So just kind of be aware of that. Don't go crazy, you know, nonstop speed runs back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, because all that power going to the front may heat up those differentials. Uh, nothing happened here, but it is something to be aware of. All right, guys, this is an awesome truck. I had a great time with it. I, you know, overseas, I think you guys could find Hobao all over the place. Uh, here in the U.S., I, I believe you get through eBay, and I do believe that they have a, a center somewhere on the East Coast here where it supplies parts to their eBay store and everything like that. So, you know, parts availability should be pretty decent with this. And, you know, if you're looking for a massive monster truck that's just going to go wild, give you some big crazy jumps and awesome speeds, you know, check out the Plus 2. It's a wild ride.